Next training video, the dash of the truck and the off-road package. We're going to start right on the left. Three toggle switches. These are the driving and fog lights in the bumper of the truck. Temperature gauge for the Kubota generator. That's the diesel Kubota generator. And this also has a backlight in it, so when the generator is running, it will light up. That gives you the ability, at least at night, to kind of keep a, an eye and know if the generator has shut down. The Kubota, or the engine driven generator, turn it on, turn it off. You make sure that you turn this off before you shut the truck off. You never want to start or stop generators under load. Uh, in the training video for both of these, it go gives more detail. Far left pedal down here is the tilt and telescoping uh, steering wheel. Cruise controls like a General Motors product on the side. Light switch. Okay, on the dash I've labeled everything pretty well. The one thing that's different about this, when you drive this truck you will charge both the yellow first and then the red. When you stop and park the truck, when you pull the yellow one to park, it will automatically discharge the red. If you forget and you do not charge this red button, your braking will be uneven and the steer axle will do most of the braking. It will be very aggressive and grabby. This truck is equipped with both a differential lock and full locking rear axle. I've also labeled, there's also a bunch of stuff labeled up here on the visor. Especially pay attention to how to operate the transmission. Differential lock is this one on this side. That's a normal differential lock like any Class 8 tractor has. You can engage that on the roll. You'll probably want to slow down to maybe 45 miles an hour and make sure that you absolutely are not spinning when you engage that. You can then engage it, accelerate and decelerate a little bit, possibly maneuver just a little bit left to right to let the gears line up and engage. You can operate that at highway speed, well slow highway speeds, let's say uh, 55 miles an hour or less. This has a stage 2 axle locker. It locks the axle solid in the rear differential. So with both of these locked, this truck will have to spin three out of the four pair of duals to be stuck. This one is an extremely low speed locker. You're going to use this in a parking lot or something like that, or possibly pulling a mountain pass where you would Instead of chaining up, you would lock the lockers. This is a 35 mile an hour or less. Um, it, 25 or less. It's labeled up here on the visor. When you engage this, you will absolutely have to go on and off the throttle slightly. Again, make sure you're not spinning. And then you're going to have to maneuver left to right quite extensively. You'll have to do the same thing when you disengage it. Volvo buttons, down is on. You have to push the little release here and then rock them down. That is the on position. That is off. This is your start for your Kubota diesel generator. Remember 10 and 2. Glow plugs for 10 seconds and then you will push and crank for 2. If it doesn't start, the light will go back out. You repeat the operation. I'm going quicker right now to show in this video. Light is on, that means it's running. You can also use this as a reference. If you're using that Kubota generator running down the road, you're going to need to keep an eye for trouble. If that light goes out, you've lost all your power to the back. You'll need to turn off the air conditioners and then restart the system. The off-road package, <clears throat> what this does is this raises the truck from normal ride height about five or six inches. You use this when you need to get in and out of parking lots where there is a dip. You will need to come 
this is a very low speed operation, 5 to 10 miles an hour only. It takes approximately 3 minutes for the off-road package to air up and raise the button. Um, I will show some uh, a clip at the end of this of how this works. So the application would be <clears throat> I'm coming into a I, I'm coming down the road. I can see I've got a parking lot with a large dip or something that I'm going to drag the tail of the rig. So I'm going to stop, pull over to the side of the road. I'm going to engage the off-road package. I'm going to make sure that I've got good air built and I'm going to give that a few minutes to air up. Once that airs up, I can then proceed through the dip. As soon as you get to the other side of the dip, turn this off. You absolutely, absolutely do not engage the off-road package and use the air dump at the same time. The air dump takes the air out of the bags and you're trying to put air into the bag. So you're asking it to do two things at the same time and conflict and it will damage the system. There's really no reason uh, in this sleeper bus operation to ever use the air dump. That's just a do not use. Uh, well, we're right here. This toggle switch right here operates the fan. Um, there's a computer module that needs to be replaced that controls the fan speed. Uh, so what you do is you turn this to on first and then turn this on. It's all or nothing. You no longer have low, medium. You have on or off. And then everything else works. You can control your temperature, control where the air is going to go. If you push this button, it will turn off the AC compressor. This button controls if you're circulating the air in the cab or picking up fresh air from outside. Uh, tire pressure monitoring system. That light that just flashed for just a second as I turned that on uh, is a warning light. It also has an audible. If you have a tire that gets low, it will uh, give you an audible and also this will flash. Then on the screen, it will then default up and it will automatically pop to the screen that has the tire pressure monitoring system it will automatically go to that screen and it will show you which tire is indicating the problem this monitors temperature and pressure the owner's manual for this all the owner's manuals are above the driver's seat in the compartment up here every driver should take time to review all those manuals and understand how the system works make sure that this monitor does not get left on when the truck is turned off. This needs to be rewired to where it's keyed, but make sure that is turned off. Uh, let's see, what else? Transmission. Everybody seems to have trouble operating this transmission. The biggest issue you get into is getting in a hurry. Number one, before you ever move this truck, you make sure that you have a 120 pounds of air pressure. This, this truck does have a clutch, but it is operated by air. So if you are low on air, it cannot operate properly. If you are backing back and forth, hitting the brake pedal, pretty soon you're low on air. You will get a warning light. It will uh, warn you that you're getting low on air and it also throws a light that says AL I believe in the dash if you keep messing around back and back and forth you can actually manage locking the transmission in gear and not have air to release it you'll end up calling a tow truck to charge with air if it stalls the engine with no air pressure and no air to run the clutch it cannot relieve the pressure and shift to neutral. If it cannot shift to neutral, it will not let the truck start. Bottom line, you monitor your air pressure and you will never have a problem. It is common as you're backing around on occasion, you will have to push the right button and go to neutral, throttle it up and build some air and then go back into gear. To go into gear, you the transmission has to see a brake light indication. You don't have to push on the brake hard to use up all your air. 
you lightly push on the brake, you then rock forward. That puts it in a forward gear. The left hand button performs two functions. If I want to skip gears, I've just started the truck, it was in neutral, I pushed on the brake, I've rocked this forward, and it has defaulted and I'm starting in third gear. I'm trying to back or move somewhere slow and I want a low gear, so I'm going to hold this button in and I'm going to rock it back. It will shift clear to first gear. If I move it once, it does one gear. If I hold the button and move it, it goes two. This also applies when you're moving forward and you are in the manual shift mode. You can push and hold this button and skip gears. Many times driving this unit around town, you can give the passengers a smoother ride if you will go into the manual transmission mode and then skip gears, shift at a low RPM. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice, but you it's all about being smooth with these passengers. We're not in a hurry. We're trying to be smooth and not jar them around in the back. The other function that this button has is it changes it from an auto shift mode to a manual shift mode. Uh, on the dash up here, you have an indicator that shows your transmission. Get so I can Right now it would be where it says CH. The reason it's saying CH is clutch. My air pressure is low. That's what's throwing that light. So right there is where it will show the gear indicated. To the left of that, if it has arrows up and down, that means it's in auto shift mode and it will shift itself up and down. The right hand button, the only, the one and only function of this button is to place the transmission in neutral. If you're running down the road, instead of pushing this button, you push this one, the truck will go to neutral, and then you'll have to shift it back in. Uh, okay, we're going to go outside now, and we're going to talk about the off-road package. I demonstrated the switches. I'm going to show you how that operates. I'm going to show on the steer axle of the truck, but it looks kind of the same under, up underneath the back of the truck. This is an air cylinder. When I throw that switch on the dash, it lengthens this rod. The truck thinks it's too low, it puts extra air in the airbags, and it goes into a raised off-road position. This also changes all of the angles on all the drive lines. That's why you do this at a very slow movement, and you do not use it if you are stuck in trying to spin. You will twist off a drive line. When you disengage the off-road package, this returns to a normal ride height position and it will again take a few minutes to bleed the extra air out of the airbag. Engage it, it puts extra air in the airbags. Disengage it, it needs some time to let the air out. This system looks very similar up underneath the back of the truck. And Periodically, you need to get in between the drivers and actually inspect that all these rods and stuff are intact. Uh, best way to do it is actually to lay on your back and slide right underneath in between the drivers. You can see the system right there. You want to make sure that these rods and these pivot points are hooked up. It's very crucial. Uh, the other thing that you need to get pay attention to every time you drive this truck once you build air and you're doing your walk around to make sure the compartments are set pay attention to the distance in between the tire and the body I use my fingers as a reference and every time I walk around I can stick my fingers through there and I can instantly know if I may have a problem with that off-road or ride height system 